So Sony was at the Tokyo Game Show. That's that's kind of a surprise, isn't it? They they literally they weren't at E3, they weren't at Gamescom, they weren't at PAX West, they weren't at any of these game shows, but they were sure. They they came out in full first. They were like, "Hold on, hold on." You know that game that you guys have been waiting to see for like years upon years, the game that Kojima has been working on for, you know, since pretty much since Konami released them. We got that game for you, but we don't got it at E3. We're going to show it to you at Tokyo Game Show, and we're going to have like two 40 plus minute demos that are going to be available to you as the public that we're just going to have Kojima-san walk you through in Japan in Japanese. I wish I was Japanese. I wish I spoke Japanese so I could understand what the hell he was saying. But he seemed excited. The crowd seemed excited. The uh, you know you know it's going to be a really really interesting game where all the all the things that the the MC has to say is ooh and ah and I mean she's just literally ooh and aahing at the game. So you know it's going to be a good game already. But why was Sony at the Tokyo Game Show? Obviously, they're a Japanese-based company, but doggone it, you would think that they would show America some love. You'd think that they would be at E3 and have a booth at E3. Didn't Sony say that they would have, wouldn't have, would have a booth at E3, that they canceled PlayStation now, that that type of stuff? Everyone went ballistic. They said, Sony's not for the fans. They're not for the players anymore. Turns out they are, just not the Americans and the Europeans. Want to know why? Look in the mirror. That's why. Look in the mirror, and you'll get your answer. Why? Because everyone hated their game shows. Everyone hated the gameplay that was shown up. Everyone hated it. Everyone hated Sony coming out and just having gameplay and having very, very, uh, very, very, like, scripted events. Very, very linear events with just gameplay, where they would show gameplay, not have a developer come on stage and announce anything. They, they would try and break the mold. You know, when it came to E3 and with some of these e e e expos, these these whatever they're called, these gaming expos that everyone goes goo goo and gaga for. Sony was like, we're breaking the mold, baby. We're not going to fall prey into that trap. We will try to do something new and innovative so that way our audience, the guys that look, the guys and gals that play our video games, so that way they can be entertained. So that way that we can watch some of their video games and they, so that way they can watch some of our video games and be like, well, you know what, we should go out and get that game this year or next year when it comes out because we watch the actual gameplay and not a three minute or a two minute or a one minute cinematic trailer where the developer shows it off and then they go back into the tunnel and then they go back outside once the trailer is done and then they talk for like three minutes making a bunch of promises that they may or may not keep. Sony was just like, well, let me prove it to you. Let me show you what we got here. Let me show you what we can do as a company. Let me show you Ghosts of Tsushima. Let me show you Kojima-san's new video game, Death Stranding. Let me show you all this stuff. Let me show you all these games. And you want to know what? The Japanese crowd were very, very grateful. The American crowd criticized them. The European crowd criticized them. They were like, "We want cinematic trailers." They, they, they don't. They aren't for the gamers. They aren't for the players. They're for politics. Sony's like, "We're out of politics. We're not Americans. Doggone it. We'll just go to the Tokyo Game Show, inspire our crowd. We're speaking this bitch in Japanese, and most importantly, we're not even subtitling this thing. We're not even gonna put in English subtitles. That's how pissed off we're at Americans, specifically journalists. I was saying that Sony's press conference." press conferences were terrible why would you go back to a place it's the exact same reason by the way as to why i think cyberpunk 2077 isn't showing off any gameplay because they don't want people to attack them i mean they're damned if they do damned if they don't you know one of the newest best games coming out in the past five years is getting criticized and getting flack because they have a, a transgendered girl in the game with a huge shalom do I mind that she has a huge shalong? No, not really. I don't really care. It's an advertisement within a game. What's what, what's relevancy? Judge. Relevancy. There is none. Other people got mad because you can't pick your gender. To be honest with you, I very, very rarely notice me picking my gender in video games. Wanna know why? Because when I play certain games like Red Dead Redemption 2, God of War, I don't really get the option. I already don't get the option in most games to pick my gender. I get it. It's important for other people. But to me, I'm not for the politics in gaming. I'm just for gaming. I am a gamer. 
I play video games. I love playing video games. Yes, but the fact of the matter is that people have fallen prey into just picking sides. And I've been saying this for months. People have been falling prey to picking sides and trying to figure out who do we vote for? Who do we get on the on the block? What should we do? What should we like? Instead of just being like, dog, want it, we're gamers. Everything has become politicized. Everything has to have an agenda now. Everything has to freaking say something beyond what is there. Sony is like, bro, we're developers of games. We just want to create video games. Everyone now wants to complain about something. I remember for like three to four months after Spider-Man PS4 was made, people were complaining about the Sam Raimi spider suit not being in the game. And people were going after them after Insomniac Games for not putting the suit in the game. And they were planning to release the suit for Christmas. For free, by the way. They've added in a lot of suits for free. Was I disappointed initially that some of my suits, some of the suits that I love to use now, weren't in the game initially? Yes, of course. But did I, but did I go on Twitter and absolutely harass the developers? No, I did not. And people are now just, ugh. Ugh. People need to stop freaking complaining about stuff and start playing video games. What's the point? I get it. I get it if things are in a bad way. I get it. If a game that every if, if Cyberpunk 2077 is a bad game, hey, I get it. But I well, but what I don't get is is the whole complaining about games that we already knew were going to be bad. For instance, like 2K and Madden and things of that nature. Even though I just made a video complaining about how bad those games were and da 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 da. But I don't get creating like series after series after series after series and, and rehashing and hashing and rehashing the same tired old shit all over again. Companies are exhausted. CD Projekt Red is exhausted. Sony is exhausted. They're not at E3. They're not at Gamescom. They're not at any of these other places. Because they're like, these guys, they don't care about video games. They care about the politics within video games. This has been 24. Remember to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe for more. I hope you have liked this video. I've worked really, really, I've, I, I mean, I've been working day and night on some of this content. I hope you've been liking it. Until my next video, I hope you have a fantastic day. And I'll see you. Bye-bye.